Today, it's going to be really exciting for the first time. The assembly of the front unit will reveal if everything will work as planned. The two main pivots of the engine are taken of the live steam version. Besides their flexibility, they also serve for the conduction of the steam from the boiler. For the electrically powered engine, the central drilling as well as the O-ring on the sphere can be omitted. The rehearsal of the assembly of the motor reveals that I missed an opening for the electrical contacts. I've been drilling and rasping it off camera. the assembly of the housing of the axle bearing. It is essential that the spring and the ball bearing remain in the housing. The current collectors are LGB spare parts. The assembly of the axis be an interesting option. The positioning of the balance weight may be defined precisely by way of lining discs between the frame and the counterweights. The inside wheels can rather be fixed rigidly or be made laterally movable by mortising or raspering a slit out of the drilling. The movability of the wheels thereby supports smaller track radius. I decided to fix the wheels of axis number one because of the crocs. Tools axis two and three remain shiftable. Axis number four is also fixed. On axis number one, the crocs cover the central drilling of the axis. However, 
only for a few tens of millimeter. A decentral drilling makes things a lot easier. The wheels of the first axis come dangerously close to the housing of the motor. Therefore, I have to change the second screwing of the motor from the cylinder head to a countersunk screw. For the rehearsal, the internal line disc help to place the crocs into the right position in order to solder them subsequently. Then the coupling rope is attached and the first try of rolling shows encouraging results. Next step of assembly, the bearing of the reversing link is assembled and the valve rod is attached. It's now essential for all screwings that they are not yet tightened too strong in order to be able to detect any tensions in the different parts. That also holds for the cylinder which is also attached at this point.
Now it becomes visible that the coupling rod and the crosshead came dangerously close to each other. The plugs of the first axis are too long and the provision screws only intensify the problem. Tooth, the plugs have been shortened and their heads be turned more flatly. Problem solved. Let's move on. The front unit now rolls just perfectly. After this exciting moment, I will now proceed with the cabin. This is actually less exciting, but requires quite a lot of patience. I'll catch you in the next video.